Hello everyone, welcome back to the Launchpad. We are at AWS reInvent, showing you the latest and greatest from the cloud, and it's my pleasure to have a team that just announced a new service today, AWS Amazon Netum. And this is very important as it complements our set of database offerings with graph <coughs> databases. So welcome, I'll let you introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Brad Beebe, I'm the product manager for Amazon Neptune. Okay. okay, Bruce McGuire, I'm in charge of the engineering for Neptune. Awesome, and would you tell us about Graph first and why is Graph important and how is it different from the databases that we have? Yeah, sure, I mean, graphs are a data structure that consists of nodes and links or edges and vertices. And the thing about graphs is that relationships are really a first order concept in the data structure. Okay. So anytime that you have applications that have what we call rich and highly connected data, where you have relationships that are really important to your application, graphs mm -hmm. turn out to be a very natural and effective way to represent uh, that data. Yeah, uh, myself as a developer, I've, tried, I've built graphs inside relational many times, and it's easier those self, uh, it's hard to make those relationships work and build queries and all this. So, from the developer perspective, how does it work? So, um, in terms of a, a data representation, as, as you mentioned, when you use a relational model to solve a graph problem, often you sort of bury the relationships inside the table structures that you have. So, you know, you'll be familiar with foreign key relationships, and when you want to write traversals over that data, you have to do very complex join operations. And that is both complicated to do, and as the traversals get longer, Relational databases just don't have the same kinds of workloads as graph applications, and so the performance declines. So yeah. as a developer, when you use a graph database, which is a database that's designed to store and process graphs and supports query languages and APIs that are tailored for relationships, you're able to build connected applications more quickly and have them respond more quickly as well, so you can achieve a higher performance for your application. That's cool, and how do developers code it? Like what are the main standards and technologies behind Neptune? So there's really two major graph models. Um, the first is something that's called a property graph, and a property graph consists of nodes and node attributes and edges and edge attributes. And the way that, one of the ways that you can query a property graph is with an open source framework that's called Apache Tinkerpop. And they have a language that's called Gremlin that allows you to write imperative traversals. So you can say, start at this node, go out to it, find an edge that connects to this other node, and expand out. And that way you can build applications that traverse the graph. The second kind of graph model is something that's called the Resource Description Framework, or RDF. And it comes from a set of standards from the World Wide Web Consortium, or the W3C. And RDF takes a resource-based approach to defining a graph. So it defines resources in terms of URIs. Think of it as something like a web URL. And then you can associate attributes with them in the form of literals. So a string that's a name or an integer that's a value. And you can make relationships between the resources as well. And Probably the something to, to add to that would be the expressivity of the, uh, of the graph language. It gets really at the, the type of patterns that you want to capture I in see. the data. And, and is this more a matter of preference, or each is suitable for different types of applications? Like you can solve almost any use case with either model. Um, what we tend to find is that customers like the property graph model because it's very natural if you're moving from a relational database application. And the imperative traversals of Gremlin make it a very natural fit if you're building an application where you have objects that are traversing the graph. Customers like the RDF model because it's a very flexible relationship. It expresses the graph in forms of what they call triples, subject, predicated, object. And there's also a lot of publicly available information data sets that you can use with sort of the, the well-defined exchange standards that are supported by RDF and Sparkle, its query language. Cool. That's uh, what interests us for me as a developer, what about the system administration? How does the provisioning and management part work? Well, one of the really exciting things about Amazon Neptune is it is a fully managed graph database feature. And it's very, very easy to provision enterprise features that aren't generally available for graph databases simply through the console. 
Bruce, do you have a little more detail about some of the features? Sure, sure I'd be happy to talk about that. I think uh, you know, the enterprise uh, readiness of the graph database we're releasing, Neptune, is, is uh, probably one of the key differentiators for for Neptune in the in the graph yeah. marketplace. I think that uh, you know, the ability to spin up to 15 read replicas, wow. and let's say you want to increase the instance size uh, of your master, you can spin up a larger instance as a read replica, and then you know force a failover to that one, so that's an easy way to seamlessly you know, upgrade uh, to a larger instance size. Um, there's a number of other enterprise uh, features in Neptune, including things like point in time restore. So you can kind of go backwards in time and choose a point uh, you know, in your database that you want to go back to. Like, like let's say you made some little mistake, deleted some data accidentally, you can easily go back and forward uh, with point yeah, in time restore. a lot restore. like traditional databases look. Mm -hmm. And so, and if you guys have any question on the stream about graph databases and Neptune. I would love to hear what you have and relay your questions to the service team. Um, could you tell us a bit more about developing apps with this and from the developer perspective, like how can developers uh, make their application more ready and suitable for working with Neptune? Is there anything that they must should keep in mind? Well, so there's a couple things. I mean, one of the really exciting things about Neptune is that we have a, a high performance purpose built graph database engine, but we're exposing it through the open source Apache Tinkerpop APIs and the RDF Sparkle 1.1 1 .1 APIs. So developers should really keep in mind using those frameworks to access it. So for example, we're supporting Apache Tinkerpop version 3.3 and the Gremlin imperative traversal language. We support mm -hmm. RDF 1.1 1 .1 and Sparkle query and update and the Sparkle Protocol 1.1 standard. So those are the kinds of things that you know, we're really expecting developers who build their applications using those open source packages and to those yeah. standards to really have a very smooth experience to be able to start using Neptune. So if they develop on that, on their own laptops, they should work just the same on Neptune, right, I guess? Yeah, so if you build an application um, using Tinkerpop 3.3, you should have a very smooth experience migrating it or running it on Neptune. And likewise, if you're using a, a Sparkle endpoint, uh, you should have the same type of experience. So uh, let's dive a bit more on the, what kind of apps would be suitable and have a big difference in Neptune? What do you see people building with this? So for me, I think one of the most interesting things about working in the graph space is just the breadth of different applications that people use graphs for. I mean, every time you talk to a customer, they, they want to use a graph to do something new and interesting that you didn't necessarily think of. That being said, there's really six areas that we're really focusing on initially. Um, the first is social networking, which you might expect. Mm -hmm. uh, recommendation engines often use graph-based approaches to oh. make recommendations. Um, knowledge graphs are is where you use a graph model to represent information. And so we see a lot of different knowledge graph applications what, for information retrieval. Would you have retrieval. an example of that? What would be yeah, a so knowledge graph application? If you go to our website now, we have an example knowledge graph on there now under the use cases. But it takes a look at, suppose you had a model, and it's actually from one of the W3C knowledge graph tutorials, where you have a piece of art, the Mona Lisa, that's located in the museum, uh, the Louvre, I see. and there's a user, uh, uh, Bob, who likes it. and by when you model information like that, you can answer questions like, uh, who was the painter of the Mona Lisa? Or where, what museums have Leonardo da Vinci's artwork? And so you can use knowledge graphs to drive information retrieval in other applications. That's awesome. And what are the other three? Yeah, so the, the other ones are uh, the life sciences. As a general space, has a, a large number of different use cases. Um, network and IT operations, uh, there's Sure. Between configuration, anomaly detection, and then just fraud applications in general have a lot of graph uh, attributes. So those are the, really the ones that we're focusing on. And how should people get started with this? You know, uh, is there a, how is the how the learning cur curve looks like? Should they learn what should they learn prior to building those apps and diving into Neptune? So. I think to get started from a uh, service perspective, the service is now in preview, so they can go to our website and they can request access to the preview. And then from a, a background perspective, just really uh, learning about Tinkerpop and Gremlin, or learning about RDF and Sparkle, you know, building a quick application. In fact, we're having a tutorial here 
uh, as we speak uh, oh. that sort of goes a deep dive into building yeah. RDF and Sparkle applications and uh, building Tinkerpop Gremlin applications. And so people can check out that video once it's posted. Um, and if anyone's watching sure. and there's still space, they might be able yeah. to head over. We have an example on the AWS blog uh, with a model that Randall built for the, for yes. the conference. But I guess there's, there's a lot of data sets and things and they can import this data, people can import data on Neptune, like their existing data. Yeah, in fact, we have a bulk load API to the service, if you want to talk about that, Bruce. Sure, yeah, so the, the bulk load API allows you to load up uh, data in either CSV format uh, for property graph. That's a really easy transition from a relational database. You know, there are a lot of export capabilities out of relational. That's an easy cool. way to get into property graph in Neptune. Um, and then we support a number of, of standards around the Sparkle 1.1 1 .1, uh, standard for importing uh, RDF data. And what about the, the costs? How much, the, how does it look like? What is it based on? Sure. Okay. So there's no, there's no cost for participating in the preview. Uh, the overall cost structure um, has uh, instance-based pricing, storage, I.O., backups, and then data transfer. And so if, if you've used other managed database services at AWS, it has a very similar pricing model. We do have pricing published on our website uh, for the preview as well, although there is no charge for participating in it. Could you give us an idea, like what are, what's the capacity of this for from the instance types and how much data should they, could they handle? Just a rough idea for developers starting with the service? Yeah, so instance type wise, initially the preview is supporting several of the R4 instances. GA will support the full family of R4 instances and then ultimately we also add X1 instances and we like to add T2s as well to allow people a very low cost alternative. From a performance perspective, Neptune is very much built for graph applications that need to have a very high throughput with very low latency uh, type query answering. So uh, for example, with the up to 15 read replicas that we support, you can answer hundreds of thousands of graph queries per second. Wow. Wow, that's cool. That's a lot. It is. Yeah. And I have a question about visualization. And is there a feature or plans or tools that you would recommend for plugging into Neptune to visualize the data that's in it? So uh, Neptune, as it is right now, is very much focused on being the database layer. Uh, but we have a number of different partners that we're working with that have visualizations. A lot of customers bring their own favorite visualizations. Um, in the tutorial today, uh, Tom Sawyer Software is presenting their visualization uh, using Neptune. And then we also have a, a company called Metafax, which is uh, presenting their software as an Amazon partner that they're visualizing a knowledge graph that's driven by Neptune. Um, comparing to existing graph databases, what would you say it's a highlight for ne using Neptune? So I think we think of Neptune's strengths as a couple areas. One is Neptune really doesn't uh, force you as a developer to choose between graph models. And so a lot of current alternatives, um, while they may support more than one graph model, i.e. property graph or RDF, um, there's a, a real performance trade-off between the two. And Neptune provide, both supports those models and provides good performance uh, for both of them. And so uh, customers will experience very good performance across whichever model they choose. And then we're further differentiated by the enterprise features. I think the package that we have of Neptune uh, as a fully managed service that has multi-AZ high availability, read replication, encryption at rest, optional support for encryption in transit. Uh, it really makes, the, all that you can configure through the console makes it really very easy for customers to stand up an enterprise grade production graph database. Oh, that's cool. And I would love to see the, the cases. I know we can talk about it yet, but um, is there any feedback you would like from developers and the people that are trying it out first? Uh, uh, let, let's rephrase again. How do people get access to Neptune? So uh, they get access to Neptune. They, they go to the website. They request access to the preview. Uh, usually we're processing in a couple of days. You'll get a notification uh, that your access has been granted. Once you can do that, you'll be able to spin up in the console, create Neptune instances within a VPC, and then you'll be able to connect either to the Gremlin server endpoint that shows up in the VPC, 
or this, the REST endpoint that implements the Sparkle Protocol 1.1 mm -hmm. to begin to interact with the graph. And you can also use the bulk loader as well to load data from S3 buckets. So to use different graph models is just a matter of using different endpoints? So uh, the way that the system is configured today in the preview, uh, once that you, you access the graph with either the Tinkerpop interface or the Sparkle interface, the database goes into the mode the for mode. That, oh, data, that model. But can they use them interchangeably, I guess? They, uh, they can't, what, what you can do today is you can have multiple instances, one that you're using with RDF and Sparkle, and one that you're using with uh, uh, Tinkerpop and Gremlin. And what you would like back from, from developers, from anything you would like to know for the people that actually go to preview? Yeah, so we would love you to try it out. We want you to, to bring your graph data, your graph use cases. You know, if you have existing uh, Gremlin traversals uh, and data, try it out, RDF Sparkle applications, and tell us how it works. We want to know, is it easy for you to use? Is it performing like you want? Are you getting the query processing that, you, that you'd like? Or are there other integrations with AWS services that you'd love to see? Awesome. Congratulations, guys, for the announcement. I'm very excited about it. I will be on stream live coding it soon enough. Fantastic. And I hope to have you guys back anytime. Great. And keep in touch for more announcements and more discussions with the teams here on Launchpad. See you soon.